math and beats this video on the formal definition of continuity let's take a look at this let's just state the definition here what is continuity of a function at a point let's assume we got a function f and it's got domain d some subset of the reals and it also has some range r also a subset of the reals let's let c the real number be in the domain of the function f then we say f is continuous at this number c if for every positive value of epsilon there exists a delta bigger than zero so that the magnitude between f of x and f of c is less than epsilon whenever we have that the magnitude of x minus c is less than delta, where x is also in the domain of the function as well. Now, you may be looking at this definition right now saying, that looks very much like the definition of a limit at an actual location. And surely enough, it is almost the same. There are a couple differences though, and that's what we'd like to discuss here. One thing is that, remember when we took a limit of a function, limit is x say went to c of some function f of x, let's say that was some number l. When we wrote the formal definition of the limit, we did not require that the function itself f be defined at the location c. But as we can see, S -E -E, here in the definition of continuity, the limit here in the limit definition really is replaced with the value f of c. So we're saying, okay, the limit is going to exist at this location x equals c, where c is in the domain of the function itself, and that limit is the value of the function at c. So here we do require that the function be defined at this location where we're taking the limit at c, and the limit itself is this value of the function. That's really what this definition is, is saying. So here's a little visualization to help us understand. Again, it's very similar to the visualization that we saw for a limit of a function. Here we are, c. c is in the domain of the function. As we can see, the function is defined at c. And then we can make a little delta neighborhood around c. And while we do that, we have some epsilon neighborhood around f of c. So it doesn't matter which epsilon we pick, we can always find some delta so that these conditions are met. Whenever we make a delta neighborhood around C in the X direction, there is a corresponding epsilon neighborhood in the F uh, direction, the output direction around F of C. So that's the big difference between just the limit of a function and what it means for a function to be continuous at a location C. Moreover, if we have a function f and it's continuous at each value of x in some subset of its domain, or just a, any other set, then we say that f is continuous on that entire set. So it could be that a whole interval of numbers a function is continuous on. And moreover, if function f is continuous at every value of x in its domain, then we say that the function is a continuous function. So could be that the function is only continuous on um, some subsets of its domain, but if it is continuous at every location of x within its domain, then the function is just a continuous function. Continuous functions are, are good functions they're nice they behave well let's look at a quick example here before we end this video let's just prove something let's use the definition of continuity to prove that this linear function here f of x is 2x minus 3 is indeed continuous at the location 
x equals 4. Now you just try to visualize the graph of this function right now in your head. It's just a line, right, with slope 2 and a y-intercept 0, comma, negative 3. And it's not a vertical line. So we should expect that this function is continuous everywhere on this domain, which is all real numbers. But even having said that, this example will help us understand to go through the proof process. It's very similar to the proof process for proving an actual limit. So uh, what do we need? We need to find some delta positive so that when we take the magnitude of f of x and its location f of 4 here, right, the output of the function at the location x is equal to 4, we need to find a delta positive so that whenever that um, difference between those values and magnitude is less than epsilon, that's always going to happen whenever x minus c, here x minus 4, is less than delta. And again, we note 4 is in the domain of the function because this function has domain all real numbers. So we got to find that. So we'll go and we'll figure out what this relationship between epsilon and delta is, similar to how we did that for um, a limit definition. Then we'll construct a proof. So let's go ahead and figure this out. f of x minus f of 4 here is the same as 2x minus 3. That's your f of x. And then minus 5. 5 is the value of the function at 4. That's the same as saying 2x minus 8. That's a typo there. Get rid of that. Excuse me. 2x minus 8 in magnitude. Then you factor out the 2. Same as magnitude of 2 times the quantity x minus 4. Then you take out the 2. Because absolute value of 2 is 2. And you're left with 2 times the magnitude x minus 4. And... For assuming that x minus 4 in magnitude is less than delta, then that's the same thing as saying that 2 times magnitude x minus 4 is less than 2 times delta. So, hence, we're going to pick epsilon to be 2 delta, and that will make this whole process work out. Equivalently, we could write delta is epsilon over 2. So, that's the side work. Then we go and just prove it. Let's assume we have epsilon equal to 2 delta, bigger than 0, of course. And we have that x minus 4 is less than delta, which is the same as epsilon over 2. Then we want to show that the f of x minus f of 4 in magnitude is less than uh, epsilon here. And so we go and we just find f of x minus f of 4 in magnitude. Same again as magnitude 2x minus 8. Again, it's stupid 2. Why is it there? And then that's the same as, oh, take out the 2, right? Again, uh, times x minus 4 in magnitude. We factor out the 2, 2 times the magnitude x minus 4. But, of course, magnitude x minus 4 is less than uh, delta. And so, hence, 2 times the magnitude x minus 4 is less than epsilon, which shows that whenever we assume this stuff up here, we get that magnitude f of x minus f4 less than epsilon and thus that's what this statement shows for any epsilon we pick that's positive there exists a delta bigger than zero so that magnitude of x minus 4 less than delta tells us always it implies that the magnitude of f of x minus f of 4 is less than epsilon Hence, the function f of x is 2x minus 3 is indeed continuous at x equals 4 by definition. So there you have it. Very similar type of process of proving a function being continuous at a location uh, compared to the just finding a limit of a function at a location. So there will be more on this continuity stuff to come. Of course, the goal is to get through this continuity and start talking about differentiability in the formal sense. And that's it for the video. Introduction to the continuity, the end, later.